Hello, everybody. Um, uh, good morning, afternoon. Afternoon, that's the one. I um, hope you're all enjoying the summer holiday that I'm enjoying in Swansea. Um, it's delightful out there. Um, can I just check in the room? Who knows what a TRE is? This isn't going to work. Um, so I've done a talk to try and persuade the rest of the RSE community that they really want to work in TREs and what a TRE is. And so I'm reckoning that perhaps this isn't quite the right talk to do for this particular audience. Does anybody on the Zoom want to raise their hand to see if they do or don't know about TRE? So it basically means I can probably skip through some of the stuff. Can I also ask, who saw me talk yesterday? Who would like to multitask me and just get on with your emails? I'm very sorry. I've, there is a certain overlap between this talk and the talk yesterday because I am trying to encourage people from other fields to come and work in, 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 this, uh, in this discipline. So what I might do, seen as 95% of the people in the room have seen this talk, is very quickly um, move through a few things, and then perhaps we could, you know, add lipids a little bit and talk about some other some other stuff as we as we go through, and maybe even move on to the other talks um, uh, as well, so people get some more more time. Um, so you all heard yesterday about HDR's uh, mission. Perhaps I should do a test um, about my next slide, which is to say, um, what, 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 what's our main focus, everybody, in terms of what we're trying to do in, in, in transforming this landscape? How are we going to do that? See who was listening yesterday. We were trying to accelerate the researcher journey um, towards trustworthy use of data for public benefit. Um, so this is all about these different uh, uh, orange steps here where we're trying to work across every single component um, in order to streamline um, the, that, that journey. Um, and I... <laughs> I literally really don't want to bore you all the tears. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, so I think I might have been put in, in the wrong session as various, various other people um, are talking about the platforms here. Um, so what we are trying to do is we're trying to get from the situation where we can do a single data custodian um, uh, working with one researcher to a place where we've got an ecosystem and lots of different people can work across that piece. We're wanting to try and get um, uh, enable studies on the whole of the UK population at scale. So it becomes really, really routine to be able to do that. Um, <clears throat> this sort of thing happens very rarely. There's a few studies that I know about that have managed to do meta-analysis across all of the uh, UK population. Um, and there's just some recent um, papers out there about that. But we want to enable it so that it becomes really quite straightforward for people to do. And it doesn't take two years in order for you to get your data um, and uh, clean it and standardize it before you can do your analysis. We're wanting to have that uh, a streamlined process when you're doing something obviously in the public benefit and you're a proof researcher we really want to have it that lots of people can come and analyze this data. And we're doing that by three different ways, accelerating trustworthy data use, empowering researchers and promoting partnerships. And I'll just flick through these because I did go through them um, yesterday. So just giving you a, a reminder and we've got <coughs> a range of different um, driver programs. So a slide you haven't seen, <laughs> um, UK data landscape, lots and lots of different silos. Um, we're wanting to, to work across these silos um, and uh, it, it's really quite difficult for people to, to get access to the data from, from these different things. So you're probably very familiar that we're looking at unconsented data. So GP data, hospital data, lab data. These are all ones that are collected at the point of care. Um, and then you've got linking to consented um, cohorts of data. So this is researchers collecting a load of um, uh, data for their particular study. And they often want to link um, both the consented data to the unconsented data. And we use trusted research environments to do that. Um, so within this, you've got often got the idea of a data repository uh, that a TRE can have. And then you've got the analytical um, virtual environment. And then you've got disclosure control process. And then you can only take out the aggregate level uh, results. Um, and then you've got uh, a range of different constraints in there. Safe people, safe projects, safe settings, safe data, and safe outputs. Again, if you guys all know what TREs are, then you know what all of these different things are. Um, so I'll quickly go through and see 
about the researcher journey, see if we can get to uh, a point where I can actually talk about something different to yesterday. New slide. <laughs> um, so uh, we have uh, we're very much wanting to work in in this technology um, technology ecosystem, and a lot of, there's quite a big overlap really between what Dare are doing and what HDR are doing in terms of in the infrastructure space, and that's because you know. It, HDR host Dare, um, but also there is an independent um, uh, entity funded by many different uh, uh, funders from from UKRI, and um, <laughs> but we recognise through using healthcare data that um, all of the same sort of patterns of right in order to streamline this, you really need these things in place, and we don't have these things in place. And Dare, uh, you know, have also found we really need these other these other things in place. Um, and so what we're what we're trying to do essentially is say, well, you know, th these things are needed for for health data, but they're also needed for any handling of uh, of sensitive um, uh, data out there. And so what we're trying to build in the next five years is many, many more automated processes and standards to help people to, to do this at, at pace. So how can we support federated analytics or how can we support a lot of different projects where you might be pooling different data sets together in, into one environment in order to, um, uh, in, in order to, to, to actually be able to query data across these, uh, across these different components. Um, and so obviously you need the APIs and the services, but you also need um, blueprints in terms of uh, in terms of how to do it um, uh, across these different things. So um, this is uh, this was a, a sort of a, a key slide here. Um, you've seen this um, about all of the different technology components that we're building. But everything that HDR builds is only going to be a fraction of all of the amazing technical solutions out there. But what we are building is trying to say, you know, can we build something together once so that many different TREs can, can use it? And what should those things be? Um, and we're also trying to say, well, how can we support the ecosystem? So how can we help people find different software out there and, and, uh, and other components? So these are the different things. I went through the gateway. Um, we discussed the sort of the current functionality of it. We discuss what it um, uh, what it does and where it's going to go to, and our key principles of uh, of development. So now moving on to another slide that I didn't have yesterday, um, which is about um, really being able to enhance trusted research environments. So. I come from. I, I ran uh, the the Hick one for about a decade up in uh, up in Dundee before I took this new role um, uh, within HDR, and you know very much when we started, it was for epidemiology um, studies or you know observational uh, data analysis. But more and more over time, more different research search groups were coming and saying, well, actually we don't want to look at the routinely collected data in one environment and, and do stats analysis on it, and then have to go to another environment where I've got my uh, genetic data and I'm gonna do some analysis there and run everything in two different environments. Really what we want is to have an environment for all of these things um, to work together in one place. But obviously, if you try and have every everything working to, uh, together in one place, it's great, but it means that a lot of the sort of tools and things that most people are used to setting up in genomic data environments or imaging data environments don't then work because you've got the airlocks and you can't you can't get access to, to the internet. So I think generally there's there's quite a an evolution that TREs need to go to to really help um, be able to analyze, to bring these two worlds together, basically. So we really need to have uh, innovation in how do you make TREs really push the boundaries of what is possible. So how do we make you know the TREs out there routinely support imaging data, genomic data? We need to enhance them so it becomes an awful lot easier for researchers to be able to install their own things or have a really streamlined process for somebody else to install it for them, but there's a there's an easy way of uh, an easy way of doing that. 
costs and things are, you know, it's really expensive to run a TRE and therefore it's really expensive for a researcher to pay to use it. And, and so when, when they're used to getting, you know, high performance computing cluster from their own, uh, uh, their own university and they don't have to pay for that. And then they come to use a TRE and they have to pay for that. It doesn't mean that the university's uh, high performance computing environment didn't cost anything. It's just that those costs are hidden because they're, they're, they're provided by the environment. Whereas if they go to a TRE, those costs aren't hidden and they have to pay for them. And so we do really need to look at how we can reduce these costs and, and optimize um, uh, the software and things within them. We need to make sure that it, it's relatively straightforward to have access to as high performance computing environment in there and GPUs. And again, with the maturity of TREs, more and more are getting these sorts of things, but there's still many TREs out there that don't provide those sorts of capabilities. They're just a, you know, a basic VM um, with, a, with a few uh, CPUs in there and they don't provide that, uh, that additional capability. One thing that that is really close to my heart with with the project that we did for for Dare that I was uh, leading before before I took on this uh, new role with HDR um, is a project called Grey Matter, and we set out to to develop a range of um, recommendations about how do you export AI trained models out of a TRE and how do you do that safely? How, how do you check that? Because we did this survey prior to that, asking a range of different TREs across the country, both and also uh, internationally to say, you know, how, how do you support AI? Because we'll be getting asked all the time to, to support AI projects. And most of them just said, <gasps> we're terrified we don't know how to do it um and quite rightly so actually because um because there's there's an awful lot of of people who run tres who not surprisingly don't have expertise in in ai development and don't have expertise in how you do disclosure control on it and how you make sure that actually if you train an algorithm that algorithm then can't be hacked in order to um uh, extract disclosive information and so um so we, we developed a, a method, a center, well, a, a series of, um, of, of recommendations for how can TREs export algorithms and how can they enhance their environments to support AI? Well, first of all, they need to provide the sort of toolkits that you need, whether that's TensorFlow or, or whatever it is that you're wanting to actually, the, the relevant AI libraries that you need within those environments. But then when it comes to disclosure control, you actually need people with real deep AI expertise to simulate what uh, what a hacker would do and actually query that model in order to make sure that you can't find disclosive information in there and so um, often you can you could maybe find out that somebody was involved in in a particular um, uh, study or or you know was in a particular category of, of having a disease or not having a disease but also if let's say there was a famous person an MP or something who uh, the press knew went to a particular hospital um, for a particular thing. And there was already certain information about them in the public domain, that they smoked, that they're overweight, that this, that, that, the other. Then actually a hacker can use that other information to actually find out essentially the, the, other, the other variables about that person. And that's highly disclosive. And so how do we check and how do we make sure when TREs don't have people in order to do that 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 uh, that checking that that we can that we can do this so there was a range of different um uh, recommendations that we had both on the legal and information governance side to make sure that there were data user agreements in terms of the ai when it comes out of the tre that we could actually limit exposure to hacking via things like um wrapping it in a web service and all of those sorts of things so different different things but what we really need to do now is actually take those recommendations and try them in the real world, because this was all theoretical in terms of how to do it. And we'd be really interested in, in chatting with people who do run TREs to say, you know, if you've got any AI projects that you're actually already wanting to do, that we could work with you um, in order to try out those recommendations and see how they need to be enhanced, how they need to be um, uh, reused and things. So I think that's a that's a big area. Um, so, so in order to do this, I, I kind of think about this as being next generation TREs. How... We need. We're going to move from a place where people do stats package analysis, stats analysis, to to uh, on small data sets to really, really, really big data sets, and there's just a massive wave of AI projects coming. And AI 
desperately needs the train on these large sensitive data sets, it makes the AI result far, far better. But in order to do that, we really have to transform the way in which TREs work and, and, and uh, what we can do going forward. And this is a completely different talk than the one I was going to give, but there we go. Um, so, um, so, so let's uh, uh, think about this as, as a bridge across two worlds when you're looking at genetic data. You've got the real world of routinely collected data where you lock everything down, and then you've got a world of multi-omic data. And they're just different, different setups and things. And we do have some really interesting novel... Um, uh, research that we need to do to say, how do we enhance these TREs? This isn't business as usual, let's just run a service to do it. This is why we need research software engineers to say, how can we do this? How can we innovate? How can we be world leading in, in providing these sorts of uh, environments? So really, it's a plea to you guys to say, let's not just make what we've currently got, you know, a little bit better. Let's really transform what they can do. And let's really enable ourselves to be ready um, for this new world. Um, I talked yesterday about about dare and and I think um i'm I'm uh, very much hoping that the next phase of dare will actually significantly invest in this how do we add capacity to TREs to enable them to do far more than they already do but also how can we enable TREs to really work together to federate to interoperate so that actually you know we're really streamlining the researcher journey and it doesn't become an absolute hassle if you need to get data from more than one place basically um and so these are some of the great projects um that um I know different people have been doing talks on um over the course of uh, over the course of the next few days um and I would highly recommend people going and having a little uh, look at them uh, particularly three of them um, might be slightly biased because I'm involved in three of them. Um, uh, Trifix, Satra, and um, and Sacro. Um, uh, uh, the the Sacro project is actually doing quite a bit of work on automated disclosure control, um, but they've also been extending the work of the Grey Matter project to say, can we actually? What can we do with the AI uh, tools in terms of the automated disclosure control as well? So, in conclusion. Um, we need uh, RSEs from different disciplines to bring their knowledge, new ideas, um, and new ideas to the world of sensitive data. I'm preaching to the converted. Um, we very much care about community, RSE recognition and career development, standards and interoperability, and open source uh, development. So I will stop there and um, just ask you guys, who's really working on creating what I describe as a next generation TRE? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so um, well, there's a few questions there. So we'll start at the top, I guess. How far, you mentioned at the start, I think, about the goals. How far away are you from being able to run analyses on the full UK population, which was the eventual goal? Um, so there, there, there are currently uh, papers out there that do that um, from uh, working on COVID projects across the four nations, um, and they've done data analysis um, in each of the different uh, uh, environments. They've standardized the data in each of the different environments enough that they can then ask those questions. They then export out the high level um, aggregate information, and they then do meta analysis on it. So this isn't about bringing all of that data into one place. That's about doing meta analysis, but we're also uh, so so for a meta analysis project, we are doing um, data across the whole the whole of the UK population. We've still got a very long way to go if we're wanting to do things like proper federated analytics uh, analysis, where you can just query that and automatically um, pull that together. Um, and the next one here is okay. So about Scottish healthcare data was consented by default. Is is that the different in the or is that not true um no <laughs> uh no so scottish St scottish healthcare data is still uh very much unconsented data and has to go for a process called uh the uh it's called pbap uh public privacy uh, public benefit and privacy panel um and uh and and that that's uh it, it doesn't it doesn't have the same the same route that you have to go through for for um uh uh for for approvals in England uh, but it still has a a a route and it's unconsented and i think we've only got time for one more question and thankfully there's one more question there so one way to reduce cost and silos is just to have a single tre rather than multiple ones in multiple different locations should we just have this monolithic data center and associated environment rather than multiple ones? 
Um, so um, I, I think for both um, uh, public concerns around doing that um, and also for technical or practical reasons for doing that, um, it would be incredibly difficult to 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 create such a such an environment. Um, so there's there's a huge pushback from the public about creating a, a permanently linked data set together. They, uh, when a lot of surveys are done, they like the idea of linking to answer a specific question, but they also think that the data controller that originally um, collected the data should still be responsible for that data. So. If you're wanting to put everything into one TRE, you're talking about linking all of the health data. We've got devolved nations already, so actually it's legally very different groups that actually host that, that different data. But then if you're wanting to look at health data and administrative data, you'd be looking at linking education data, police data, and health data all in one massive data warehouse. And personally, for me, I don't like the idea of my data being in a massive data warehouse with all of that information in there whatever controls, um, uh, you know, our future government, uh, our current government might say, you know, we could put all the controls on, what about a future government that that that, that, that maybe doesn't um, uh, look at those controls? So uh, it wouldn't make me feel comfortable, but a lot of the public um, uh, work that we've done also says that that wouldn't be, uh, 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 people wouldn't be comfortable with that idea. Uh, 